Welcome back. One of the hotter topics when it comes to baseball, this Pirates bullpen. And gentlemen, I'm going to read out four names and give you four numbers. Antonio Bastardo, 6.6 .6 million. Tony Watson, 5.6 million. Daniel Hudson, 5.5 million. Drew Hutchison, 2.3 million. These are four men that the Pirates are paying a combined $20 million to either be bad or be in the minors. Chris Muller, I will ask you this question. Are there any options that the Pirates have right now to fix this bullpen internally, and what could they do to fix it? Uh, internally, their best option is probably if Chad Cool doesn't prove able to get out of fifth innings of ball games or through the fifth inning or into the sixth or through the sixth, really, which is what he again failed to do tonight. You'd look at a guy with that kind of velocity and maybe at one secondary pitch thrown that slider and try to convert him into a one, maybe a two inning guy that you could use who can just wipe people out with stuff if, that, if that's how you deploy him. Other than that, I mean, they have to hope the guys they have pitch better. I, I, I'd love to come up with some sort of grandiose solution. They have one elite, spectacular, one of the best handful in baseball arms in Rivero, and then a whole lot of nothing after him. So I guess you put Chad Cool down there, but then that exposes how thin they are depth-wise in their starting rotation. Yeah, and then you actually would – I mean, to me, it's time to just bring Brawl up and do that because how much worse can Brawl – I guess it can be much worse than Cole, but I think he could give you five or six innings, which is what you get from Cole. And he's a lefty. But I think the other thing is you need help in the bullpen. Yeah. I mean, if you're Clint Hurdle, you got to be – every time you pick up the phone, say, can't we go to Felipe now? I mean, now? Can, can we go to him now? I and mean, there's nobody else that you – or, 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 Paul, you could be so desperate to use him, you're up, what, six runs and <laughs> yes, have him warming night. up. What – I mean, that, that horrid, right. horrid usage. Yeah, that's, right. that's actually an embarrassment for Clint Hurdle but, 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 uh, that he know, ever even the, considered getting him up at that point well, in the game. To, and, and to uh, Josh's point, the amount of money that Jesus have is dead money in this bullpen. That's the kind of stuff that gets general managers fired. Of course, this general manager is going to get a, an extension, according to And he to deserves sources. one because he does an all-things-considered fantastic job. A couple hiccups. Like, his problems with it, he has building a bullpen like that, which I don't dispute, Paul. Are, are minimal compared to the good things he's done. Without him making a Melanson trade that everybody panned, they don't have Rivera well, not everybody and they have no it, options. Chris. Not everybody panned that trade. Most people, right. a lot I mean, of short-sighted people panned that trade. I think trade. most the people, people who call for Neil Huntington's that, that's job, a, that's the kind screaming of a straw idiot man. masses That's kind it. of a straw man because for, the, for a month before the trade deadline, everybody knew Melanson was going to get traded. So, so I mean, all these people that were shocked like and it. angry, I, I don't understand where they were at. But the more the legitimate gripe would be you flipped Liriano and didn't get anything back. Not that he's been good, but you get a pitcher in that deal. He's not helping you at all, and you're like Josh said, you're paying out to him. Something I found interesting was Milwaukee. Now this kid Hader, who's their top pitching prospect, is pitching the sixth and seventh inning for them. And when I saw that this week, I, again it jogged my memory and made me think about Glass. Now, I mean, clearly it is not working for him as a starting pitcher. We have seen stories of guys, Carlos Martinez, Johan Santana, uh, David Price, guys who started in the bullpen and then took on starting roles. I would consider that with him. I would have Glass now right now in the minor leagues, 20 to 25 pitches, try to get him the, to empty the tank Andrew, do you and think, bring him back as a reliever. Andrew, do you think that their reticence to do that speaks to a stubbornness on Neil Huntington's part to, to kind of want to keep with the plan he has but for guys? Chris, because, plan because I think, still... I think, no, 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 but I, I'm saying, just let me finish, I'm saying that's one of my biggest gripes with him, and I'm a huge fan of his. I think when things don't go the way that he plans them to go, I think he wants to stick with that and not well, do something then, that you suggested there, well, which right. wouldn't well, be a I, horrible idea. Well, then I think that's the difference between, say, a Jim Rutherford and a Neil Huntington. I think you can still have the plan to develop and turn a guy into a starting pitcher, but right now, starting hasn't worked. I would give him a shot in the I, I think the if you want to compare and cap. contrast those two guys, the biggest difference is one guy plays for this year and plays to win this year. No. The other guy is worried about 2021. One guy plays with a, in a league with a salary cap. And, and that doesn't, doesn't matter. It, that yes, has it nothing does. to do with one it. Yes, it has does. absolutely nothing to do with it. That is the biggest Pal of you know what when it comes to <laughs> arguments to defend because there's a because in a, with a salary cap leg you still have limited resources so you still have to figure out ways how to fit people into a budget period that's what you have to do and so and 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 and, 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 the, and here's the other thing and here's the other thing it has nothing to wait 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 it has nothing to do with philosophy. Neil Huntington is always extremely conservative when it comes to trades, when it comes to the way that he handles prospects, when it comes to the way he views prospects, and when he makes trades, he's always much more worried about who he's sending out than who he's getting. 
So don't give me this nonsense about, well, one has a salary cap and one doesn't, because that is meaningless when it comes to this discussion. And you know what? I torched the guy who called my show the other day and tried to give me that crap. It was Paul? Me, Paul. It Paul was probably you. Wait, Paul torched the guy? I yes. would never imagine that coming. I mean, because that's, I mean, you, you mean you got you got limited resources in both cases. Let's stick to the topic of trades here, because another thing that's been brought up with the trade deadline about a month away or about five weeks away, the, the rumors about, or at least the talk about whether or not Andrew McCutcheon should be traded, whether or not they should look to trade for the future. Garrett Cole's name's been tossed out. If you're the Pirates at this point, Andrew Filipponi, what are you looking at as far as a trade market? Are you trying to build longer or are you trying to dump and build for the future? Um, or should I say you're trying to build right now? Versus uh, I mean, I, I, I think right now, as long as you're under 500, you can't really take yourself seriously as a contender. But at the same time, I have a hard time saying we're going to you know, be a sell. Uh, we're going to fancy ourselves a seller because of where they are relative to first place. So I would be in a holding pattern with my team right now. And I would be interested when guys like Neftali Feliz, Johnny Peralta, Francisco Rodriguez, when these guys became available, I would be interesting in, br interested in bringing them to Pittsburgh on a trial run. Yeah, it would have been the kind of guys that they would have, to pardon the expression, dumpster uh, dived for in the past, right. especially like a Feliz that they're familiar with who was pretty solid for them. Well, how about Paul's guy, Jen Mark Gomez? He's available now, Jen Paul. Mark Gomez. <laughs> well, when you're dealing in limited resources, <laughs> you have to be very is, careful hey, about how you allocate every Alan Hansen is batting 480 in the leadoff spot for the White Sox. Or a worse team than Whatever, the Pirates. There you go. Well, but, so I, I think this is a really tough question to answer as putrid as this division is I think you have to at least take seriously the idea that that Milwaukee could stumble back into the into like almost 500 territory again and you could be still right there until the Cubs pull away I'd love to be answering this question on July 18th when the Pirates get Starling Marte back and we would have that much more clear of a picture of where they are in the standings I think I would be shopping McCutcheon pretty actively but I, if I were Neil Huntington, I'd be a little gun shy to do anything selling off players because this team could still be in the race as bad as this division is. And as bad as this NL Central is, it does lend to the argument of how long you try to hold on and try to make this thing work before you wave the white flag, so to speak. In the meantime, we need to take a, we take a break. We come back. Mark andre Fleury, where do you rank him among all-time Penguins? We'll ask that question when we come back on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown.